we've got to bring her home. We've got this. Come on. I've known Josh for over 10 years. We've been good friends. We click really well, actually. Liam likens himself a little bit to Tuka. They think they've got, he's got a similar sense of humour. <laughs> Am I looking good? All right. I think you need to lose a bit of weight, but... You can talk. If you get an investment, we'll go on a diet. Gaining pounds in the den might mean shedding a few later. And while they can't shrink waistlines, winning the backing of these business heavyweights could expand profits. You're going to do great. Hello, dragons. My name's Josh, and this is Lee, and we are the proud co-founders of Let's Sanitize. Today, we're asking for an £80,000 investment in exchange for 5% of our business. Let's Sanitize was founded at the onset of the pandemic. Our existing businesses were forced to close due to the nationwide lockdown. So we worked quickly with our existing suppliers to design and develop high quality, customizable hand sanitizer stations. And Harry came to life. It was an instant hit and we had orders confirmed immediately. Meanwhile, hand sanitizer gel was fast becoming an essential product. So we took the decision to develop a range of high quality, scented hand gels that were gentle on the skin, were vegan and effective in killing viruses. We've recently launched a scented hand wash and hand lotion, which has grown Let's Sanitize into the complete hand care lifestyle brand. So if you'd like to take a look in your boxes, you have got some samples of our products. Customizable hand sanitizer dispensers and an accompanying range of hand care products are the offering from Josh Cummins and Lee Hoppen who are seeking £80,000 in return for 5% of their business. Stephen Bartlett wants to find out how long the duo can keep cleaning up. So I guess the first question is, your business grew out of hopefully temporary pandemic. Where does that leave your business after Touchwood, everything is um, back to normal? Well, we're actually... Um... We're a complete hand care brand now, so we have scented hand wash, we have hand lotion. And can you give me a breakdown of how your sales have developed? We sold over a million pounds worth, it's nearly 1.1 million now, um, of branded hand sanitizer stations. Our hand care range um, followed on, and we've sold over 350,000 pounds worth of products. We sell a lot of products directly to businesses, and we expect that to grow further as more and more businesses open up and have more footfall as the lockdown eases. So in the last 12 months, give me some numbers in terms of sales. So we will finish between 1.35 million and 1.4 million. And gross margin on that? Gross profit, net profit? So our gross profit is 522,000 and our net profit is 321,000. And how does that vary between the hand care products that you've offered? Typically, if you were to look at the mist spray, um, the manufacturing cost is about £1.20 and we retail those for 9 99 And if it was our exclusive range, refill bottles, which is around £2.20, and we retail them for 39 99 So we've managed to build in quite a bit more bigger margin on the more recent products. News of impressive sales and increasingly generous margins has piqued interest in the den. Now Peter Jones wants to discover more about Josh and Lee's entrepreneurial bona fides. You mentioned something about your business. You had a business before? Yeah, so I, I'm a co-founder of an events experiential photo booth agency. Our turnover pre-pandemic was 1.1 million. But what happened to the business? It's still going the business. OK. I have a recruitment agency, and we work with some of the biggest brands in the automotive industry. Prior to the pandemic, it was turning over around £900,000. And it's still going today? Thankfully, yes. Have you got any other businesses? No. <laughs> Not yet. No, exactly. Yet. So. How do I know that ultimately, recruitment agency, everybody comes back and you're going, oh my goodness, this is fantastic. You're absolutely knocked off your feet because your events are opening up now and it's happy days. And I'm sitting there with a hand sanitizer thinking, where'd it go wrong? Our businesses are well established. I've got a management team in place. So you're not going to be involved in that business? I will be involved in the business from an ad advisory capacity, but on a day-to-day -day basis, I am 100% focused on this company. Well, you can't be 100% focused if you're going in to talk at another business. 95% focused on Let's Sanitize. The pair appear to have no problem generating profits, but Peter Jones is concerned 
that they could lack the focus necessary to dominate an ultra-competitive market. And Deborah Meaden wants to drill down further into the duo's numbers. Can I just pick you up on your margins? 1.4 million pound turnover, 522,000 pound gross profit. What are you including in your GP? Our gross profit is our turnover, less our cost of sales. What are you putting in your cost of We've sales? We've got the cost of the product, the development of the product, uh, and cost for contractor staff. That's not what should be going in your cost of sales? Um, I, I, I'm not sure, Deborah. to be completely honest with you. OK, hold on a minute, hold on. Listen, guys, you're smart. <laughs> Asking what your GP is is not a tricky question. Sure. This is like business one, two, three. So what margin do you think you're making in your business? Uh, I believe it was around 40% on the gross. Listening to your answer to Stephen, you said that you take a £1.20 product and you sell it for £10. Yes. No, but that, that's, not, that's not on all the products. That's only on a few of the products. No, it gets better than that. That's your worst product. It, your margins get even bigger. But they don't, because when they turn up into your accounts, your margin is only 40%. Can you explain to me why your numbers say one thing, and then when you look at your individual figures, they say another thing? So maybe that might be to do with the fact that, for example, if um, we would take our hand sanitizer 500 ml bottles, currently uh, the cost to manufacture those is £2.22. Um, if we sell through the likes of Ocado, we sell at £3.29. So, I'm not sure if that will. Oh, blimey. That was a big piece of information <laughs> you missed out when you were talking about your margins, because you <laughs> said we make them for £2.20, we sell them for £39.99. And I should think every <laughs> single one of us sat here and thought, <laughs> really blimey, this I mean... is a business I really want to get involved in. But the reality of that is actually you are selling a lot of product at a very suppressed margin. We should have been more prepared. You're in my to... eyesight, guys, so... I, I know, certainly. No hiding place for Josh and Lee, as only their affability saves them from a more serious mauling. So will Sarah Davies be prepared to pump her cash into cleansing? I am so impressed with you guys that when the pandemic hit, both of your businesses crashed to the floor, Overnight, you turned around and you've built a business bigger than the two individual businesses you had. That is phenomenal entrepreneurship. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. But having said that, I just don't see this business has anything unique enough to carry it past the immediate opportunity where everyone who's selling hand sanitizer is doing great at the moment. But that can't continue as the playing field levels out and people who are established brands with established distribution, they will own that market. That's what concerns me. So I'm sorry, guys. It's definitely not one for me. I won't be investing today, and I'm out. Disappointment for Josh and Lee as a first dragon washes her hands of the deal. The circumstances which created their enterprise may be temporary, but does Stephen Bartlett believe that the entrepreneurs themselves are here to stay? You're remarkable. Thank you very in much. In terms of delivery, likability, 10 out of 10. Thank you very you know? much. Thank it you means very a lot. Much. Um, however, my gut tells me another opportunity will come along. You'll, you'll start a new business there. That, those are the kind of guys you are. I want to invest in entrepreneurs that have long-term ambitions, that I have confidence they'll remain focused for the course of that journey. And I don't have that confidence. And for that reason, I'm going to say that I'm out. So, guys, something worries me. You left five people sitting here thinking that there were huge margins in this market without actually explaining your customers, the different streams that you've got. And as an investor, I need to understand the mechanics of the business. And unless you can present all of those parts of the business, I can't help. Because I will never know which bits are working and which bits are not working. 
So I won't be investing. I'm, I'm out. Lee and Josh, I would class you as entrepreneurial street fighters. That's what you are. Thanks a lot. And I congratulate you for that, because I love that passion. But what I require when I invest is absolute commitment, focus, dedication, execution. So can I convince you, Peter, that I've put all of my focus into this, help grow this, because we are literally only at the tip of the iceberg. The market's huge. I think there's so much opportunity here, and I can assure you that I will be fully invested to get this to where it needs to be. Right, Josh, that's what I wanted to hear. Josh, I'm going to make you an offer. Wow, mm -hmm. fantastic. I'm going to offer you all of the money for 20% of the company. Thank you so much, and thank, thank you, you very much. I really it. appreciate the offer. Thank you. An unexpected offer for the hand care entrepreneurs as a smooth-talking Josh persuades Peter Jones into a last-minute change of heart. Only Tuka Suleiman is yet to show his hand, so is he willing to table a competing or even complimentary bid? You are credible entrepreneurs. That's what I wanted to hear. Thank right? You. you are. Let's get one thing straight. Thank you. So I'm going to make you an offer. Oh, thank you very much, Tuka. I will give you all of the money for 25% or I'm willing to share with Peter for 12.5% each if Peter thinks that him and I can add value to you. Thank you for your offer. Thank you, Tika. Peter, would you potentially be interested in sharing? I'd be very happy to share with Tuka. You know, he always does what he's told and it works well between <laughs> us. Do you mind if we talk to the wall? No. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Peter Jones has offered £80,000 in exchange for a 20% share of Josh and Lee's business. And Tuka Suleiman has tabled an even larger 25% bid, with both also willing to share the deal at 12.5% each. Do 10. 10? Reduce the 7.5. No. Just one. 10. With their lowest offer standing at quadruple the amount of equity the pair were initially looking to give away, will they risk everything by attempting to negotiate more favourable terms? Um, thank you both very much for your offers. We were looking really to give away no more than 15% in total. Would you both consider reducing down to 7.5% each? No. Can I tell you something? I would make three or four phone calls very quickly and your business would trouble. My instinct was 20% because I did feel that that was, that was right. I thought then Tuka coming back at 25 was fair because you're getting a bit of a double bubble as well. I would be happy to say we strike at 25, but when we get our money back, we drop to the 20%. So we have 10% each. OK, in that case, um, we'd love to accept your offer. Great. And thank you right. both very much. Wow, Great. well done. Thank you. Well done. Thank, thank you very much. You very much. Thank All you. the best. Cheers. Thank you. Right. Josh and Lee have done it. The pair may have been down, but they were never out, and they leave the den with the £80,000 they were originally seeking. Yes! <laughs> and two dragons in their corner. <laughs> Buzzing, absolutely it's buzzing. Like in, a, in a boxing match. It does. It was like a boxing match, back and forth. I feel like on top of the world. They are real trader entrepreneurs. What's that show on TV with Del Boy and Rodney Trotter? Do you know what I love about that show? They always ended up making a little bit of money on the side, <laughs> and they always ended up in a pub having a drink. What's wrong with that? I was going to get a few drinks. Oh, I need a large drink after that.